Politechnic College occurred in Crimea, a region of Ukraine which was annexed by Russia in 2014, the region remains unstable. The attack received minimal coverage in English-speaking media, and official reports were inconsistent. Example, officials originally reported a gas explosion before acknowledging the blast was actually the result of an explosive device. Terrorism was blamed until witnesses began reporting that the dead had all been killed by gunshots, at which time authorities acknowledged that the attack was a school shooting. Initial reports also claimed there were possible accomplices, though the Russian investigative committee has strongly insisted that is not the case. As a result of the inconsistent, limited reporting, conspiracies spread that the attack was performed by a group of individuals, perhaps professionally trained. Despite these constraints, there appears to be adequate information provided to conclude that Vladislav Roslyakov was the sole individual responsible for this massacre. Vladislav Igorevich Roslyakov Date, October 17, 2018 School, Terch Polytechnic College Location, Terch, Crimea, Ukraine Age, 18 Killed, 20 Wounded, 70 Outcome, suicide. Shooter population, college. Psychological type, unknown. Attack type, random. At approximately 9.28 in the morning on October 17, 2018, a fourth-year student named Vladislav Roslyakov entered Kerch Polytechnic College in Kerch, Crimea. Video surveillance recorded him entering the college through a rear entrance, avoiding a metal detector. He was wearing black boots, black pants, and a black jacket over a white t-shirt inscribed with, which is Russian for hatred. He had two backpacks with him, which were later determined to contain two nail bombs, a shotgun, ammunition, pipe bombs, and a Molotov cocktail. Roslyakov set off at least one large explosive in the school's canteen before proceeding to the second floor where video surveillance shows him approaching the office of the college's director. However, she had left the school minutes earlier. Upon discovering her office was empty, Roslyakov, now without the black jacket and donning a black glove on his shooting hand, began indiscriminately shooting at teachers and classmates as well as computers, locked doors, and fire extinguishers. Witnesses describe him as walking up and down the hallways of the second floor, firing randomly and never speaking a word. Reports state that the attack may have lasted as long as 20 minutes, reports of police response times vary from 5 to 20 minutes, despite the fact that a police station is located across the street from the college. Approximately 200 members of the Russian security force responded, fueling the narrative that the attack was a terrorist incident. The shooting came to an end when Roslyakov committed suicide, which into the game doom, and the plans suggest he had intended to burn the school to the ground. Nineteen people, not including Roslyakov, were found deceased at the college. A twentieth victim died at the hospital. The Russian health minister, Veronika Skvortsova, reported that a total of 70 people were wounded, 10 were in critical condition, including 5 in comas. Russia's investigative committee reported that all the deceased had died as a result of gunshot wounds, while the injuries were attributed to both explosions and gunshot wounds. In a sad twist of fate, Roslyakov's mother, a nurse, helped those wounded in the attack, when she discovered her son was the perpetrator she attempted to commit suicide. Vladislav Roslyakov was born in Kerch on May 2, 2000. He grew up in the rural exurb of Kerch known as Arshinsivo. As a child, his family called him Vladik. He was raised in the home of his paternal grandparents by his father, Igor, and mother, Galina. A quiet, thin woman, Galina was a low-paid orderly at the hospital in Kerch. Igor was a former soldier who had served in Afghanistan for several years. After he returned, he was assaulted. This resulted in brain damage, he began collecting disability payments. After the brain injury, Igor became aggressive toward his family. He reportedly beat his wife and son, as well as his own parents. He was also an alcoholic, neighbors said Igor was more often drunk than sober, and he became more violent when intoxicated. On at least one occasion he had taken a sword into the front yard and threatened neighbors, challenging them to duel. Igor and his father were, at one time, both Cossacks, a people of southern Russia and Ukraine noted for their horsemanship and military skill. 
Neighbors remember Rosliakov as a hyperactive child who displayed sadistic tendencies. He reportedly was once seen hanging cats by their tails in the basement of the family home and laughing as the cats howled. He was caught trying to capture wild kittens, and many neighborhood cats began to disappear. Neighbors were so concerned they asked his paternal grandmother to have a child psychiatrist examine him. She dismissed their concerns, believing Vladik's behavior to be normal. His mother was reportedly unable to stop him as well. When Rosliakov was 10, his parents divorced. Kalina brought him to live with her in a rundown apartment not far from his father's home. The conditions in the house were horrendous, and they could not afford amenities. It is unclear what sort of relationship Rosliakov had with his father from this point. Most reports state that he had minimal contact with Igor, however he did visit his paternal grandparents from time to time. Sometime after divorcing Igor, Kalina joined Jehovah's Witnesses, a religious sect banned under Russian law. Neighbors described her as a very devout follower who spent much of her time in prayer. Some neighbors felt Kalina showed no concern for what Vladik did because she was too focused on her new faith. However, this conflicts with stories that Kalina would frequently punish her son for disobeying the rules of her faith. At school, she did not allow him to engage in hobby classes, participate in amateur activities, or even watch movies because these activities are not allowed in Jehovah Witness practice. Though Rosliakov often joined Kalina at Jehovah Witness services, he did not consider himself a member. He publicly disavowed Jehovah's Witnesses as some kind of fools who dance and sing. One friend said, Vlad and I were making fun of Jehovah's Witnesses, he made a lot of jokes about them. Despite these differences, Rosliakov appeared to care for his mother. He understood that she was a single mother with no relatives or friends to talk to, so he specifically made sure to spend time with her. Rosliakov attended a local public high school and was described by one teacher as a normal, sociable child who smiled often but struggled in school, receiving poor grades. He was reportedly popular with girls, but avoided them. Rosliakov was sports-obsessed and preferred the company of male athletes, many of whom were 20 years older than him. He would often practice with them, but eventually quit due to undisclosed health issues. In the seventh grade he got into a fight in the middle of class, but otherwise he was not considered an aggressive person. Rosliakov spent extended periods of time after school in the library, using the school computer. He became interested in punk rock and began dressing and acting in ways his mother disapproved of. Despite punishment, he continued to disobey her. On the advice of a teacher, Kalina bought him a computer in hopes that it would solve the problem, it did not. Rosliakov began attending Kerch Polytechnic College in 2015. He received free tuition to major in installation, commissioning and operation of electrical equipment of industrial and civil buildings. He traveled 40 minutes by bus to attend. Approximately a year prior to the attack, he began living in the dormitories on campus with a roommate, despite the fact that he was ineligible to live on campus. Rosliakov began displaying an interest in firearms and weapons around the time he began college. According to a media report, he began seeking out military veterans online, pestering them for information about firearms and explosives. This also matches with reports that neighborhood children began avoiding Rosliakov after they once saw him carrying the bayonet of a machine gun on the bus. One friend reported Rosliakov always carried a hunting knife with him, even when he had to pass through the school's metal detector. At some point he joined an airsoft team, it is unclear whether this was during high school when he was sports-obsessed or after he began college. Investigators have discovered Rosliakov's interest went beyond weaponry, his internet history revealed a vast interest in violence and violent ideologies, neo-Nazism, ISIS, and serial killers. Rosliakov became more aggressive in his behavior as well. Per one report, Rosliakov was often forced to sit in the chair of shame, a punishment introduced by the college's director. On one occasion, he reportedly sprayed pepper spray in a classroom for no apparent reason. Rosliakov purportedly made numerous comments to friends and acquaintances that he hated his classmates and would gladly gun down everyone at the school. Accounts suggest that as a teenager, Vladik became sullen and withdrawn. His paternal grandmother said he was kind and helpful, 
but also withdrawn and reserved. This seems to have been true at school as well. His few friends described him as a loner, quiet, and not sociable. He reportedly avoided former friends, and when he did speak to them, he would incessantly discuss violence in general, and Columbine in particular. He expressed support for Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, the perpetrators of the Columbine massacre. Similarities between the Kerch attack and Columbine have led many to conclude. Rosliakov was inspired by them at college. Rosliakov appeared to have no intimate relationships. His conversations in the run-up to the shooting show a young man with no certain future. He acknowledged he only attended school because he was forced to buy his parents. He expressed apathy for his life and the lives of others. He openly contemplated committing suicide and performing a shooting on social media. According to an ex-girlfriend, Rosliakov expressed anger towards his classmates for ridiculing him because of his differences. He told one friend that he would seek revenge against evil teachers. He did not see a future for himself in the impoverished region, and he felt there was no way to escape. Despite previously considering joining the military, Rosliakov expressed disdain at the prospect of joining the armed forces. The process for legally acquiring a firearm is difficult and expensive in Russia. In order to get a firearm license, one must pass a mental health evaluation and receive training on the use of firearms, both of which Vladislav did. Evidence reveals Rosliakov graduated from the Egeta plus private shooting school on July 18, 2018. His license was issued September 18, 2018, allowing him to purchase the shotgun used during the attack, an 8-shot 12-gauge Hatsan Escort in guard. Pump-action shotgun with a pistol grip. He reportedly hid the gun in an abandoned building near his home so that his mother did not find out about it, the Jehovah Witness faith forbids the taking up of arms, and rejects violence. He also purchased 150 cartridges for the shooting four days prior to the attack. To finance these purchases, Rosliakov stole money from his paternal grandmother. He also took all the family photos from her home. On the eve of the attack, Rosliakov burned many of his personal belongings, electronics, a Bible in which he had highlighted verses, family photos, notebooks, and a knife. He also may have buried a safe. This occurred in the woods nearby his home where it is believed he practiced shooting. Shortly before the attack, his mother reportedly noticed him watching videos of school shootings. When she inquired why, he simply responded, no reason. Rosliakov skipped school the two days prior to the attack. He stayed at home with his mother. He did not leave on the day of the massacre until his mother had left for work. In the days leading up to the attack, Rosliakov had been speaking with a girl whom he appeared to have a romantic interest in. On the day of the attack he had arranged to meet her at a location on campus away from the site of his rampage. Some speculated that this was done in an effort to spare her life, though the attack occurred hours before their date was scheduled, giving less credence to this theory. Though the Columbine massacre is not particularly well known in Russia, the similarities between the Kerch attack and that shooting immediately led news outlets to label the attack Columbine 2.0. Rosliakov's appearance drew comparisons to Eric Harris, the black pants, shooting glove, and white shirt inscribed in a similar manner. Rosliakov also chose the same weapons as Harris, a shotgun, large bombs, and pipe bombs. The placement of a large explosive in the cafeteria was the same, as was the decision to commit suicide in the school library. Rosliakov was familiar with Columbine and appeared obsessed. He expressed his support for massacres, and specifically referenced Harris and Klebold as Awesome Gone. He also reportedly used the nickname Vodka online, Vodka was the nickname of Dylan Klebold. It seems quite likely that Rosliakov had come across the Columbine shooting online, and had adopted Eric Harris as a role model. Rosliakov played violent video games, including Doom and other first-person shooter games, but his fast online presence showed a broader obsession with violence. He posted under many numerous pseudonyms, including Vladik Rosliakov, I Want to Die, Strange, Anatoly Smirnov, and Skinovsko Art. In 2016, Rosliakov stopped using his personal accounts, though he continued to have an online presence through his other accounts. 
Analysts discovered he spent most of his online time in online forums dedicated to serial and mass murderers. Here are some examples of what Roslyakov posted in such a group. Why write this? There are a couple of million people like me in this social network alone. I will tell you why, I have practically no empathy. I think I'm a half psychopath. I have little interest in talking to people like myself. All feelings are lies, deceit and bullshit. We must hide them from ourselves. Also, I'm surrounded by idiots, and I could shoot them all. But it's bad to kill people. I just voice my opinion and do not call for killing. Investigators analyzed Rosliakov's search history. His most frequently queried terms included shotgun, terror, and terrorist. He also watched numerous videos on executions, seeking out ISIS propaganda which is banned in Russia. Analysts also noticed Rosliakov's interest in anarchy, punk rock, and bomb making. Rosliakov's interest in violence was evident in how he expressed himself online. On one account his avatar was a picture of Anatoly Anaprienko, a Ukrainian serial killer who killed 52 people from 1989 to 1996. Another report indicated that he used Dylan Roof as his profile picture for his Steam game account. Roof was a white supremacist who killed nine people in a 2015 attack on an historical black church, Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church. It is possible Rosliakov held racist views given he was part of several pages supportive of Ukrainian neo-Nazism, and he often posted pictures of swastikas. Messages between Rosliakov and several acquaintances were leaked. Much of the conversation was mundane, but confirmed previous reports about Rosliakov, he was suicidal, had a poor outlook on his future, and was interested in serial killers. Several quotes from the more interesting discussions are provided below. R. Osliakov, I remember few adequate people at school. We at school did nothing but booze. Still stealing. I had two alcoholic poisonings by the age of fourteen. R. I was in the sixth, I remember drinking in class. Poured beer in the juice container. Body stole beer. We drank often. We also sold metal. We stole it from the service yard. A friend taught me. I remember that the peasant from the garage came out, the door was not closed, and Nikita stole his bag of bolts. In childhood, there was a lot of immoral shit. R. I studied in college for three years. I did not make friends. No like-minded people. All kind of wretched. And the jokes are stupid our genitals draw everywhere. R. I have the same now. I try not to let people get too close. I look at our former class or is it heading? Drunkards, whores and suicides. Female, who is a suicide? R. Nobody yet. R. I have very atypical views. I do not think you understand them. They have always been a barrier in personal relationships with other people. I actually have no friends. I am a degraded nihilist. Complete indifference and contempt for the world. These quotes are interesting for the insight they provide of Rosliakov's mind and childhood history. Rosliakov acknowledges an amoral youth that involves smoking, drinking, and petty theft. However, these indiscretions appear to be firmly in his past as he goes on to show contempt for the people around him engaging in excessive drinking and promiscuity. This attitude of dismissal towards those engaged in immoral acts has been found in other school attackers, most notably Sun Hui Cho. Also of note is Rosliakov's repeated use of the term nihilist to describe himself. Nihilism is often associated with Friedrich Nietzsche, whose writings were a major influence in the ideology of Eric Harris. Whether these similarities were caused by influence or happenstance is unknown.